So four more inches of water than the Silver Silverado. 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 Hey everybody, it's Matt with House of Vacuums. And uh, you know, one of the things that I get told a lot as I'm showing people new vacuums or as people bring in their vacuums for repair is, uh, you know, they just don't make them like they used to. That's the reason why a lot of people hang on to their old vacuums, like say the Electrolux you inherited from your parents or from your grandmother, right? My grandmother had this for 30 years. It's never let us down. Well, there's a difference between reliability and function. So, uh, you know, I, I've done a repair video on the Silverado Deluxe, um, depending on when I release this, it may be shortly after or before this, but I did a service on this. So um, what I want to do is I want to compare these older vacuums to a new vacuum and see what we're getting in terms of uh, in, in terms of performance. So we're gonna gauge whether or not you're really getting everything that you need out of one of these older vacuums, or do you think that it's as good as it is because of confirmation bias? So let's take a look here at what we've got. So here on the bench, I've got a Silverado, which is this guy here. Now this unit I just serviced, and this does have a replacement motor in it. So this motor was replaced at some point. Um, it's a newer motor, but instead of being a two-stage motor, it is a single stage. What that should do is that should result in um, maybe less airflow, but greater suction. So this is a little bit of an outlier, but still when vacuums get this old, you may have replaced the motor uh, at some point, or you may need to replace the motor at some point. So I think this is an important data point for us to have. Then we've got a newer vacuum. We've got an Aris Lux Classic. So this is the same as the Epic 6500, which was made by Electrolux. This is now made by Aris, uh, which is the old Electrolux company became Aris uh, here in the United States. So this was made, uh, it's a 90th anniversary edition. So this was made in 2014. And then over here, we've got a brand new SIBO E2. Uh, the reason why I'm using the E2 is because it's easy to turn on and off using this button. It doesn't have the handle controls, so it's easier to demonstrate this on. But this will, you know, any E series will basically function the exact same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gauge both the uh, both the water lift, which is the sealed suction. So let's talk about water lift and sealed suction. That isn't necessarily how well a vacuum cleans, uh, but it's how powerful, how raw, how much raw power the motor has to pull against an immovable object. So this is a really effective measure of how well it's going to work with regard to tools. Um, another measure that we're going to use is um, is airflow. So that is rated in cubic feet of air per minute, uh, so or CFM. So that is the volume of air that the vacuum can bring into the machine. And that is a better gauge, uh, typically, of how something is going to perform with regard to carpet cleaning. Now, there, you know, there's all kinds of discussions getting into the technical aspect of this as to what uh, you know what's more important or the ratio of airflow to uh, to suction. Well, you know, getting away from all of that, um, you know, we're, we're basically looking for high numbers on both, right? So the highest number wins. Now there is a calculation that was created here in the vacuum industry called air watts. It is a combination of both sealed suction and um, airflow. So it, it's a way for us to calculate exactly how, or you know, generally how well an overall cleaning system is going to rank against another cleaning system. Now there are other ways to gauge this. If you watch performance reviews, uh, his channel, 
he does something called Working Air Watts, I believe it's called. I'll try to link to it in the description. Uh, it is also a really good gauge of how um, airflow and suction kind of interact. Um, and I don't have, I haven't built one of those rigs yet, so we're just going to use Air Watts for now. But this should give us a pretty good idea how each of these machines performs, um, you know, and give you an idea. Is your old Electrolux really cleaning like you think it is? So first we're gonna start with the Silverado. Now what we're going to do is we are going to gauge the airflow. So this is a two and a half inch um, register. So there's a calculation that we have to do in order to figure out what the cubic feet of air per minute is. And I'll show you that here in just a second. is a mechanical limiter. So there is a valve that is going to trip whenever uh, it meets, whenever the suction meets an immovable force. There's a valve that opens up to bleed air into the machine. Um, and the number that the inches of water that each of these will start that valve at is going to be different depending on your mo you know, your vacuum make. Um, so this is really kind of an artificial number. This is the number that the company has set as a safe value for the vacuum pulling against an immovable object. If we were to shut those off, if we were to block those safety valves, we would get a much higher water lift number, but then we'd run the risk of destroying the machine or cracking a housing uh, that air you know got to get air from somewhere right rough numbers. I don't want to see anybody in the comments saying like, uh, you know, you were wrong about the math. You know, your your surface area calculation was off by two tenths of a point. It, this is this. You get the idea. We're dealing with constant numbers across the board here. So um, so the comparison, while you could nitpick whether or not my math is 100 percent correct, we're applying the same math to all of this. So the results really speak, speak for themselves. Um, you know, we when we service this machine, um, and I'll show you in the video on that. There's no final filter on these on these Silverados and Super Js, these older models. So basically, all the exhaust has all of the fine dust and carbon dust from the motor just shooting straight out into the back out into the room. Very dirty system. This unit here does have a final filter right here. If we pull this up, it does have a final filter right here, but this is still not sealed. So what you've got like right here, look at this. You got a hole right here straight through to the motor housing. So even though they kind of made, and look at this, it just kind of flops off. Even though they made an attempt to add a filter to it, it is by no means a sealed system. You're still going to get a lot of bleed through back out into the room. On this guy here, you've got the bag, you've got the secondary filter, and then on the bottom, of course, you've got the S-Class hospital grade filter, which I have showed you in previous videos, which is sealed with a rubber gasket. Um, so if we pull this guy out, just in case you haven't seen any of my SIBO videos, rubber gaskets right here. 
So 100% of the air that comes into the machine has to exit out through this filter. That to me, other than performance, is the biggest reason why you'd want something like this. So, so going back to my original point, when you say they last forever, is that a good or a bad thing? Well, when you see big changes in technology, that can be a bad thing. If you have allergies or asthma, or you just care about indoor air quality, period, which we all should, the CDC has been saying for years that indoor air quality is, is extremely poor and that we really need to do a better job at making sure that we're protecting ourselves against fine dust, VOCs, um, you know, environmental contaminants that are within the home and a quality filtering vacuum is the first step in that solution. Um, so with that, there have been huge leaps forward in terms of performance, filtration, uh, cleaning attachments, you know, you go on and on. There's been tons of improvements in terms of how vacuums are designed and how they perform. Uh, and you want to get something that is going to solve a problem for you. And filtration, tools, and cleaning ability all solve problems for you. And that's why a lot of times it's not worth throwing the money into these old vacuums. This unit here, the Silverado, I've uh, serviced this and it's going to run her with a couple of parts that I put into it. It's gonna run just a hair over 150. This unit here, we put a bunch of parts into, um, and this is going to run the customer around $350, and they were okay with that. That's what's crazy. They were okay with that. They were more than halfway to a SIBO, brand new SIBO, right? With a 10-year warranty, has all the things that we've talked about so far. They were halfway to that, and they still wanted to put money into this machine. This, in my opinion, is a much better choice in a lot of situations than fixing something that is old, dirty, and outdated. Um, you know, there is a limit to what these old designs can do, and I'm not knocking them. They're great. They were great back in their day. I'm not saying that you didn't enjoy your Electrolux. I'm not saying that they were bad machines. I'm just saying the industry's moved on, and that's something that we all have to take into account. Just because something works doesn't mean it's accomplishing what it should be doing for you in your home. And that's the point I'm trying to make. And just know that I do appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.